Hello fun people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I like to take science and apply it to all things plants, both outdoors and indoors. In today's video, we are doing an indoor plant video. First one in a while, but the first one of many here in the very near future because things are about to switch to inside rather than outdoors. I'm in a zone three, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, and our first frost date is around September 17th. Now given right now, it's about 40 degrees Celsius outside, but regardless, it's gonna cool off and it's gonna cool off pretty darn fast. And today's video, we're going to be doing a self-watering planter. Now I'm changing the room that we do the filming in um and i'm gonna do like a plant wall basically so i got seven of these containers off of amazon and they basically go right directly onto the wall they can also be hung um and my intent is just to make a green wall literally where there was kind of those hanging shelves and then also the grow tent in the past these are pretty cute it is a cover pot essentially with no holes in the bottom with a another pot in top and the this pot only goes about uh halfway down into the actual cover pot itself allowing for a water reservoir that will then self water this top portion so i've gotten quite a few videos actually asking how to do self-watering pots and it is a little bit of an art there are some things you want to keep in mind now there's no wrong or right way to do this if you have a method that's working for you then stick with that you ignore what i'm telling you but for someone who is new to self-watering pots and they want to get a little bit better idea on what to do this video is the one to watch so i'm going to go over how to actually prep the house plant before we transfer it into said self-watering pot um the soil type i'm using all the way to fertilization in and of itself and some things that you may want to look out for after the actual transplant to see how the plant is doing so the first thing that I like to do whenever repotting anything is a, in particular house plant, is I do like to pre-soak the plant. So I've had him soaking for about a half an hour inside of this, literally sitting inside of water. And I'm an underwaterer. That's just my personality when it comes to watering. I like to put personalities on people's watering methods. And that's the other reason for the self-watering containers is my hope is that this is just gonna in general help me out quite a bit. I have so many things on the go in life. So I do find it difficult sometimes. So the first thing you wanna do is check out the soil that's existing inside of the plant that you're repotting. So this is a classic heavier potting soil. There isn't any chunky bark, there's no chunky perlite. It is mostly peat with what I can see some vermiculite and some smaller size perlite. This is something that you do not want to put into a self-watering pot. The reason being is because it's too dense. That density causes compaction, especially under saturation, and that compaction ultimately pushes oxygen out of that soil profile, which will restrict both the roots from their oxygen uptake, which they do take oxygen up through those roots, but it also will not allow for the beneficial microbes that nitrogen cycle phosphate solubilize etc and so forth to do their job and it will allow for anaerobic bacteria which is the nemesis of our the bane of our existence as houseplant owners and will actually cause the root rot and that sort of thing so the first thing you actually want to do is remove all that excess soil so i'm going to go ahead and do that first and then i'll show you what the end result is you don't need to get all of it off you just need to get a majority of it gone Okay, so I do have these roots cleaned up pretty darn good. One thing you will see is the actual propagation plugs. So this is pretty normal um, with houseplant people to have this. A lot of folks will say you need to transplant um, right away and remove these plugs. Don't <laughs> because it's going to cause a lot of stress on roots that are not yet formed. You can see as I pull the plug apart, the actual roots are embedded inside of the actual fiber. It's like a cotton. They're a little bit different than Jiffy. So they're not quite Jiffy pod level, but you can see the roots in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply rip the sides open just to allow myself to get out this plug of soil 
and allow me to just have this rooted kind of fiber don't pull that sheet off it's not a big deal it's not the end of the world just want to get that stem breathing a little bit so we're going to pull off the really dense soil around that and this will pop out and some may not have this it just all depends on the retailer or um, the nursery that these are from so I had four I'll just uh, show you once again okay so this one this plug came off entirely not ideal if there's roots in there but there doesn't seem to be any so you can see these ones are not coming off the roots are embedded in this I'm not going to cause stress and actually pull on these I'm going to leave these in place so you can see this is nicely cleaned off you can now wash these roots if you wanted to but you know for the most part these are actually um, pretty good and it should be a-okay so inside of this now I'm just going to set my plants you want to work quickly you don't want those roots to dry out too too much if you know you're going to be working for a period of time put them into some water these roots are not meant to dry out. They're not used to being particularly very dry. So we're just gonna put them in there to uh, prevent shock. So the next thing is the actual soil itself. Mine has a hole in it because my dogs were playing with it. But the soil I'm using is uh, Justine's Soil Booster. So this is a company, a Canadian company. They're also in the US too. I'll leave a link uh, down below. There's a discount code. You can get 10% off. Video's not sponsored. But what I will say is that it is um, vermicompost from the GTA. So, and I think the US one is a different city. It's not from Toronto, but essentially they're taking garbage and they're feeding it to worms and then making potting soil out of it. Now their potting soil that they have is actually very, very nice. It has the chunky perlite. So the very large perlite that I've uh, spoken about in a number of different videos that is very important. It has the larger sized wood sticks and then it has um, wood chips and then the, the vermiculite, or sorry, the verm, vermicompost as well. Now, if you watch the video on vermicompost um, or if you watch the video on chitin, then and frass as well you would know that vermicast essential for house plants or just plants in general because the response to the frass from the worms which is the poo um, being around the roots triggers the plant into thinking that there is a pest in the soil near them they need to send out all the army to help protect against said pests so what the plant will do is it will put protective barriers up on either the roots or the leaves or whatever it needs to to help prevent against pest issues so it's kind of cool research but regardless this is going to help you now I typically with my houseplants like to stay pretty synthetic the reason being is that I can get concerned about soil that dries out not being able to support microbes every time the soil dries out our micro population dies off and then we have to reestablish it to cycle nutrients and that's why us underwater tend to when we water get lots of yellow leaves and you name it because we've killed off everything in our soil we have to re-establish everything and that takes time so what I'm gonna do for the organic setup and the self watering which is ideal in this case is I'm also going to use my humic acid and I'm going to water with that every single time. It's just gonna keep things biologically active. Essentially, humic acid is very, very old compost. Some people will argue with me on this, but it is coal, a byproduct of coal. It's from a specific coal seam, which is very, very old compost. It's an old jungle that's just been compressed and aged for millions of years. So that is what I'm going to be using to keep this biologically active. And then I will be neutralizing my water's pH. So I did an entire video on this. I'm not going to go into great detail on how that's done, but I would neutralize it after the ketonic or the humic acid in this case is added. So uh, the reason for the chunky mix and not a classic potting soil mix is that air I need to introduce as much air as possible because the air allows for microbes to do their job it allows the uh, nematodes to do their job it allows the roots to do their job without the yucky stuff interfering and that's where the chunky soil comes in uh, comes into play so I'm going to fill my container up with my package that my dogs are playing with 
Whenever I'm repotting anything, I like to do like a small base layer on the bottom and then put my plant in and then pot over top of that. So my base layer is in and then I'm just going to put my little plant in place. And with anything like these pothos, any sort of aeroid uh, root system, we can plant them quite deep. We don't have to plant them the way that we would with some annual plants or other plants that are rhizome sensitive. If we have a rhizome sensitive plant, we don't want to bury that rhizome. We want to keep it on the surface as much as possible. So I'm going to continue filling this and I'll show you what I do last. Okay, so lastly, I will compact this, which sounds counterintuitive, but it, it works. So I'm going to give it a good firm push. I'm going to water it and then I'm going to push again. And then I'm going to chop up if needed and I'm done. So that is it that is all the key takeaways here are going to be using the ph neutralized water using a chunky mix which i normally do not like because i am an underwaterer but the chunkier the better and then if you're going organic try to keep a biologically active soil as much as possible whether that be through inoculants or um, ketonic in this case whatever it is and if you're going synthetic then again you still have to neutralize that pH before you water, and that is going to be key. One thing I will say is some plants will react different to this transition. To minimize the stress of the transition to a different pot um, and medium ultimately, is you are going to want to water it, keep it very, very moist, and put it in the exact condition you took it out of. So literally put it in the exact same spot so it gets the same light, same humidity, same temperature as normal. You don't wanna leave it outside in the heat. You don't wanna put it in a shadier position. And if it is a very special plant to you, you may even want to stick all the foliage into a Ziploc bag and place the bag over top and then really mist inside of that keep the humidity nice and high it's just going to help alleviate any stress that the plant may have the thing here is that we are changing the roots environment and the roots are responsible for water uptake and ultimately keeping our vascular bundles or our vacuoles in our actual plant uh, leaf cells full and if they have been damaged and the plant is evapotranspiring, so uh, the stoma is opening up, it's losing water at a rate that's faster than what the roots can uptake based on the biomass of the plant compared to said root, that's where you know some imbalances will come up. So you know keep that in mind and uh, mitigate it as possible. And again, that would be through proper watering of the roots and then trying to keep that humidity stable or high in the actual foliage itself through um, ambient humidity changes. Misting is not gonna work here. It's gonna have to be a Ziploc bag or like by a humidifier type situation. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you're a regular potting soil, self-waterer, Latrusa Pond, Lekka. I'd like to actually know how you guys grow your houseplants. It'd be interesting to know. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.